of the hot topics in uh, the fleet world these days is the police interceptor utilities made by Ford. Most people uh, just refer to them as the explorers that the police are using, um, having problems with carbon monoxide. Uh, working with um, you know neighboring cities and counties, uh, what a lot of them are doing is just placing uh, carbon monoxide detectors in the cabin of the vehicles just to make sure that if the alarm does sound that the officer is aware and can either turn the vehicle off or escape from the vehicle. Um, we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to be testing a, a few products. Um, you know, essentially we are going to put in carbon monoxide detectors um, and I have two here that I wanted to show um, and how we made that decision. And we have a couple other devices that we're experimenting. The first with. carbon monoxide detector here, you can see the kitty. I haven't even pulled it out of the package because when I saw the AA batteries, that kind of concerned me. Probably doesn't mean anything. Um, it was just something I was concerned with. This uh, first alert over here, again, this isn't, you know, I'm not trying to plug a brand or anything like that. Just, just saying this one has a sealed battery. On the back side, it has a little switch here. You just flip that up to activate the battery. And what I've highlighted here, and I'll try to get in close, is the sensitivity of this detector. So over on the left, you can see the, the, so the CO levels parts per million, and then the response time. So at 70 parts per million, um, it'll take you know anywhere from 60 to 240 minutes um, to set off the alarm. 150, 10 to 50 minutes, and 400 parts per million, 4 to 15 minutes. Now when we were uh, researching this, we found, this is kind of an interesting product here. So this plugs into you know the, the vehicle's 12 volt and you can see the holes in it here. So this is actually a USB charger that doubles as a carbon monoxide meter. And it's made by this uh, US solid company. Now the interesting thing on this is the sensitivity is set to three parts per million plus or minus two. Um, and that's really sensitive. Finally, we have the pile carbon monoxide meter that you can see here. Um, this covers a wide range in, the, in measuring parts per million. And uh, we will be doing a test with two uh, utilities. The first one is you know, essentially just from the factory, and the next one will so be So on this fit. pile carbon monoxide detector, um, it came with a little chart. I've highlighted it again. I'm going to just start with 100 parts per million. You can see that that is uh, OSHA's exposure limit. Also, 200. That's where you're going to experience headaches, fatigue, nausea, and dizziness. And finally, 800 parts per million, you're going to experience dizziness, uh, nausea, convulsions, and uh, death in two to three hours. So obviously we're trying to avoid that. Um, so next we're going to start uh, doing this test. And we're going to start off with the Explorer that has not been uh, up for the year. Okay, this is one of our brand new uh, 2017 police uh, interceptor utilities. Um, I just started it, and we're going to go ahead and uh, turn on the pile carbon monoxide meter and put it at the exhaust just to see what we, uh, we get initially. Okay, so for the purpose of this, let me turn this off. We got up to about 140. And uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and place this vehicle inside of a, a bay. Uh, we're gonna test it in several different ways. Uh, the first one will just be with all the uh, windows up, vehicle idling. I'm gonna check on it every five minutes or so, and I'm gonna tape the, the meter to the inside of the window so that I can see it and uh, take readings. Okay, so for the start of this test, I have the vehicle pulled in. There was some uh, question about whether the, uh, the AC or, you know, just having the, the fan on is uh, possibly bringing carbon monoxide. So what I've done here is I've got AC on and I made sure to turn it off the in-cabin circulation. That way we're getting air from outside. I have the uh, carbon monoxide detector on the seat and it's armed. And I also have the USB uh, plugged in. 
Over here on the uh, driver's side windshield, I have the pile meter installed, as you can see. And again, I'm gonna run this for about 15 minutes and we'll come back and check. Okay, so here we are testing the uh, police interceptor. Um, I've got my phone. It's now been on, uh, phone set to stopwatch. It's now been just over five minutes. Um, as you can see here, the meter has not changed at all, showing one part per million. Um, the detector inside on the seat is not going off. And the, uh, the blue, I don't know if you can see it, the blue LED light uh, is still going on the, uh, the cigarette lighter uh, carbon monoxide detector. Apparently it's supposed to turn red if it, if it uh, finds it. Um, the other thing I've done is we're, we're inside of a, our tire bay here. And I've done this so that we don't have air, uh, you know, you know, air movement pushing or pulling the, the gases away from the vehicle. And also, I set up another uh, carbon monoxide detector, um, you know, probably seven, eight feet from the vehicle, uh, just to know if we we get to a point where we're uh, getting a large amount of uh, carbon monoxide in the, the area. Okay, we're back, and it's been uh, almost 21 minutes now. As you can see, we're still hovering between zero and one. The blue LED on the cigarette lighter carbon monoxide detector, still blue. The uh, detector on the seat is not going off. Vehicle still running, been running this whole time. Now we also have the detector here, it has not gone off yet. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm restarting the time. In this case, I've gone ahead and I've opened up all the windows. Um, I've even opened the doors. Uh, again, the window is open. And um, I even have the rear hatch open just, you know, for no excuses. If, if anything's going to cause an alarm, I would think this would here. And if it does cause an alarm or if we get any rise, then what I'll do is I'll test again with all the windows open, but the doors and the hatch closed. Um, and I have the meter set up on the seat and I'm, I'm going to talk outside because I've got the fan up on high. I'll show you that here in a minute. Okay, we're back again on the second test and you can see we're approaching 14 minutes. Again, this is the test where we have all the windows and doors open, including the rear hatch. No alarms, we're still hovering between zero and one part per million. So I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this portion of this We're test. back in the car, we just finished up the second test. I just wanted to note that uh, we're just over 500 RPMs. Uh, you know what we're idling at and again most of our officers when they respond um, they have to write a report so they may have the windows up or down and they're in the car for 20 minutes or so and that's why we did it with it just idling uh, the third and final test we're gonna do on the uh, you know this vehicle is essentially right from the factory we haven't touched it um, this will be a driving test where we get the RPMs up get them on the freeway um, get the vehicle on the freeway, get the RPMs up and check it. Uh, I've got Chris here, he'll be filming, and you can see we're still uh, hovering between zero and one. And oh, we have a carbon monoxide detector in the, the front with us, and I also have one in the rear, um, you, know, you know, where you would put your gear or whatnot, so that we can make sure that the, you know, a prisoner isn't uh, getting any different kind of gas. All right, we've been driving for about 10 minutes now, um, just around town. Um, the meter's still reading um, one, if you can see right there. Um, you know, I've just been stop and go traffic, um, just simply just trying to see um, what happens around, ta around town. So. We, st we still have the uh, ventilation going and we have the windows up too. All right, we're on the freeway, um, going about 60 miles per hour at uh, about 2,000 RPMs. 
Uh, the gauge is reading about two parts per million right now. So we'll just continue driving and see if it raises up any higher than that. So we've been driving around on the freeway. Uh, meter's just been staying about um, fluctuating between one to two. Uh, we now just changed it to recirculate mode on the AC uh, panel. So we'll see if that has any change on the readings. All right, so we just returned and finally shut off the vehicle. We drove uh, about 10, 10 minutes one way and another 10 minutes to come back. Um, the, this is the highest we ever got was two parts per million. We heard some chirping, but I think that was just when it changed from one to two. Um, the detector, which is considerably lower in the, uh, whatever you call it, the power port, um, that never went off. And remember, that's going to go off anywhere from two to, to five uh, parts per million so i don't think there's any problem with this vehicle again this is the vehicle that hasn't been touched uh you know to prep for for police service so next we're gonna take a look at vehicles that have been